Yeah. But honestly, I mean, I just go by based off like whatever. <laughs> okay, good evening everyone. Today we're going to do a teach back on uh, the important chapters we're assigned to you for today, which includes nervous system disorders such as cerebrovascular accidents, traumatic pain injury, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease. I gave you a study guide for you to study. Uh, we're going to also be discussing about rheumatic arthritis conditions, okay? fractures. So let's deal first with more important topics such as what? A cerebrovascular accident. What is the layman's term for a CVA? Stroke, okay? Are we going to encounter patients with a stroke in the hospital? Yes, yes. yes we do, right? Cerebrovascular accident, or otherwise known as stroke, is a very common problem that involves what organ? Brain. brain. And what part of the brain is affected? Yes? The what? What, which one? Okay, I know your mouth is full, but your answer is correct. But can you be more specific? Because blood vessels, there are two kinds, arteries and veins. So that's what I'm saying. Be direct to the point, you say don't blood vessels, because you're gonna be wasting ATP there, right? You always say cerebral artery, because you know what cerebral means. Brain. You are a very cerebral person. This major is very smart because you come from what school? West Coast, the best in the West. So we're dealing here with cerebral arteries, which apparently, if you remember, the aortic arch, you have the what, common carotid, divides into internal and external carotid, and the internal carotid becomes what? Gives rise to your cerebral arteries, right? Anterior, anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, and posterior cerebral arteries supply different lobes of the brain, right? And you know the reason why they're important, because they carry what kind of blood? Oxygenated blood, because of all the cells in the human body, which one is very sensitive to oxygen levels? Muscle cell, bone cell, or brain cells? Exactly. You could be brain dead in four to five minutes. There's a reason why if we have to do CPR on a patient, it has to be done ASAP. If you delay, and when you do chest compression, you're actually compressing the heart that has stopped so that the blood will go where? To the human brain, right? Okay, now, and CVA, so again, I have already mentioned it this many times. Why do we use a concept? How many of you have subscribed to the Joe Agamu MD channel on YouTube? Okay, if you did, you can see all the videos I have there. One of the ones that I showed were in the faculty members were my audience, where I made them laugh. Uh, core nursing faculty. A concept map is a map that is designed to guide students to reach their destination, which is to learn. A lot of times we have we read a book, we have PowerPoint slides, we get lost. But what is the purpose of a map to guide you? It's like GPS. What does GPS stand for? Global positioning system or GAMO positioning system. Okay. I guide you to know what you need to study. I give you a study guide, right? I normally don't give study guides for the past 10 years. We started the blended. Last term I did not, people were crazy, angry with me, blah, blah, blah. Now I give study guide, they're happy with the study guide. But still people don't use the study guide. Because if you just study the study guide, you get a perfect score. I, I, I will guarantee you that, right? Or at least a 90%, if you just study the study guide, right? Now, CVA. Give me an example of the CV. There are three types, common types. Ischemic. Huh? What? Ischemic. Ischemic. Okay. Ischemic strokes, right? Okay, which leads to an infarct. Now, what are examples here? Huh? Thrombotic. And the other one is what? Embolic. What's the other one? Hemorrhagic. So what am I draw? I am drawing here a concept map. And the map we're in, I only put what kind of words? What kind of words? Keywords. Important words. That is what you're supposed to know and remember and retain where? Here. In your brain, right? Okay. I'm not trying to become like me, but if you can have somebody 
that you want to imitate maybe maybe someone like me, okay? <laughs> okay, this is the brain. The artery has a lumen, right? That lumen is where the blood will flow. Let's make the lumen bigger. It has three layers, tunica intima, media, and adventitia. Ischemic strokes is due to the same pathology that you have learned in the past, which is called atherosclerosis, right? And what exactly is atherosclerosis? The deposition of fat where? In the tunica intima of the artery, or what we call the endothelium. So what happens if you have a fat deposit there? What happens to the blood flow? Decreases. And what is a ter another term for decreased blood flow? What's another term which means decreased blood flow? Yes? What? What, what? Who said ischemia? Of course, what else would it be? So the amount of words you know measures the size of your brain. If you have a limited vocabulary, your ability to learn will also become what? Limited. The more words you know, learning is unlimited. When you do a Google search, what, what do you put in the search engine? Words. If I put word ischemia, they probably would give me decreased blood flow. And what would cause a decreased blood flow? In the heart's coronary arteries, in the brain's cerebral arteries, atherosclerosis. So the deposition of fat will decrease the radius, and therefore as such will decrease the blood flow. Remember Q equals P over R? Remember the formula we had here before? Okay, so you have ischemic stroke. Now, when does it become a stroke? Now, have you heard the word TIA? What is a TIA? Transient what? Ischemic attack. What does transient mean? Temporary. What does ischemia mean? Decreased blood flow for a period of how many hours? 24 hours. Temporary or transient attack in the brain, which means there's an artery with fat deposits there, the lumen has decreased, and eventually, what is the common denominator in all these? A blood what? Clot. In thrombotic stroke, the clot is attached where? To the wall. It's a stationary blood clot. Here, the clot is what? A traveling what? Blood clot. <coughs> Here, it's a stationary what? Blood clot. It means that the clot originated, formed in the arteries of the brain and attached to the wall. Which wall? The endothelium of the tunica intima of the cerebral artery. Now, what made this possible? the fat deposit. So you have a blood clot plus fat deposit, you have atherosclerosis. Now, what's the difference between a stroke and a TIA? A TIA, it is what? Reversible, temporary, while a thrombotic stroke or CVA is a brain infarct. Okay? So ischemic or infarct are not the same. Ischemic means decreased blood flow, while infarct means what? Zero blood flow, the tissues are dead. See the difference? If I put the word infarct here, brain infarct, then that is the type of stroke we're dealing here with. But the, 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 patho the pathology is the same. You fat with clot, traveling clot. Here, what happened, how come? So what, can, what are the signs and symptoms, depending on what part of the brain is affected? I want to be sure I'm in the middle of the camera. Yes. If the left side of the brain is affected, you get paralyzed where? Right. Right. Contralateral side. Contralateral means the opposite. Why is that so? Because yes, Ms. Because in the medulla, the nerves are... What happened to the nerve fiber tracts? Fibers are going another side. What's that third term for that? They cross. If you want to be more sophisticated than that, instead of saying crossing of the nerve fiber tracks, the left fiber is from the frontal lobe. 
where the primary motor area is found, they go down on the left, but when they reach the medulla, they do what? They cross to the opposite side of the medulla oblongata, and they start to go down on the right side of the spinal cord, and the spinal cord gives rise to spinal nerves. All the spinal nerves that give rise to the radial nerve, ulnar nerve, actually are controlled by what? The left side. The right side of the brain controls what? So the manifestation would be a hemi what? Plegia. Hemi means half. Plegia means what? Paralysis. Complete paralysis. What is the opposite or difference between hemiparesis? Partial. What is pija? Complete paralysis. I'll give you an example. My specialty in my residential training was physical medicine. I deal with a lot of stroke patients. A patient who suffers from a stroke, half of the body is paralyzed on the left side. Left hemiparesis is this. Sir, I want you to lift your arms. A normal person, hemiparesis, Normal person, <clears throat> hemiparesis. Now, what's the difference between hemiplegia? Sir, I want you to lift your left arm. Zero motor strength, or maybe one or two, just twitch. See the big difference? Okay. Now, what happened here? Why is it temporary? Because apparently, there's a fat deposit, and whenever there is a fat deposit, it promotes more clot formation. The clot form within 24 hours, guess what happened after 24 hours? It's gone. So you may manifest with hemiparesis, but after 24 hours, you have what? Back to normal, as in normal, in a TIA. Can you also suffer from sensory loss of half of the body? Yes, yes especially if you involve one the sensory nerve fiber tracts, which includes the parietal lobe. Do you understand? So, is there also a clot here form? Yes, but what happened to the clot? It got dissolved, and you will learn that because we have certain blood components that are thrombolytic that can actually dissolve the clot, or most likely because of the force of blood flow, it allowed the clot to become dissolved and travel everywhere. You understand? Now, thrombotic means it formed within the brain itself, in the artery. What about embolic? What's the most common area upon which the clot would come from? The heart. heart. Which chamber of the heart? Right. Will, I'm, I'm not kidding you. This will come out in the nursing board exam. I have seen the nursing exams, and it will come up. Yeah. What they'll do is they give you a diagram of the heart, like this, septum. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle, pulmonary veins, okay, aorta. What's the most common area up in which the clot would come from? Left or right, and why? Left or right? Who says left? Who says right? Who says I have no idea? Okay, who says I don't really care? I think all of you said that because you didn't even raise your hand, right? You're just too lazy to raise your hand, okay? The point is, you have to care because do you know that it takes only one question in a nursing exam to pass or fail? Why do I know this thing? Because remember, I reviewed this for 10 years. If the computer stops on that question, that question will be the deciding factor whether you pass or fail. Minimum of, if I'm not mistaken, 75 questions to 265 questions in the RN exam. I think LVN is 85 to 205. LVN. Yours, 75. So if the computer stops at 75, it can only mean two things. Either you pass because you're from West Coast, or you fail because you come from a different school. <laughs> How do I know that you will pass? Because we have the green light. If you pass the green light, 99% you will pass. If you do not pass the green light, then you are on a red light. <laughs> Don't ever take the exam because you are going to be failing. Okay, going back to this. So, which one is the chamber involved here? Left atrium ventricle, but definitely the left ventricle. 
Why? Why not the right? Because if there's a clot here, go to the lung. Now, why will it stop in the lung? What is in the lung that will make it stop? The pulmonary capillaries. Of course, your lung has the capillary that can only pass one red blood cell through. So in other words, a blood clot will have to get stuck in the clot in the lung. It's called pulmonary embolism. What about a leg vein from the inferior vena cava? There's a venous vein. When you have thrombophlebitis and deep vein thrombosis, can the clot travel to the right side of the heart? Yes, you end up with pulmonary embolism too. That's why anybody with thrombophlebitis or deep vein thrombosis, are you going to exercise the leg? I think I wasn't here, I was in San Francisco when this was part of the topic, right? No! Why? If you move that leg with the clot there, guess what? It will travel to the saphenous vein, femoral vein, inferior vena cava, go to the lung, via the right side of the heart, you end up with a pulmonary embolism. How would you know? Because a patient with two things, sudden onset of difficulty of breathing and sudden onset of chest pain, and can he die? And who caused the death? The nurse. Why did the nurse cause the death? Because the nurse exercised the leg which he was not supposed to do. How do you prevent thrombophlebitis? Thrombo means clot, phlebitis, the leg vein is inflamed. How do you know? First things first, you're the nurse. Patient come to you, nurse, I have pain in my right leg. What is the first thing you should do? Examine the patient. That's part of nursing assessment, right? Sir, can you please tell me when did this pain start? Oh, a day ago. Were you involved in any trauma? Did it, did it hit the table or chair? No. It just suddenly... Then what have you been... I've just been lying down in bed for the first three days. I'm tired, I'm sleepy, blah, blah, blah. Lack of movement, sedentary lifestyle, promotes thrombus formation and inflammation. So how do you know? Remember the word ocular inspection? <laughs> Rubo, red. Warm, palpation, pain to the Lord. Inflamed, thrombophlebitis, flebo means vein, invite. It can go to the lung. Now, what about in a stroke like this? Well, the clot form here, how does, it, how does it go? How does it go to the brain? Very simple. Again, it always boils down to what? Anatomy, believe me, if you really master your anatomy, you'll always get a perfect score in this class. <laughs> believe me you will always get a perfect score. Because if you know what is normal, then it will be easy to know what is what. Normal. All your questions will be answered if you master your anatomy. Okay, the left ventricle is here. What is the name of that 405 freeway that brings blood to all the organs? The aorta. 405 north, 405 south. It goes where? Common carotid, here you have brachycephalic, subclavian and common carotid, and then it becomes internal and external. The internal becomes to the brain. In other words, if you have a clot here, can it travel to left side, quarterlateral hemiplegia. Right side, left hemiplegia. Do you understand? Now, do we stop there? No. An inquisitive mind is a mind that is going to learn a lot. The problem we have is that we rely only on the study guide and we don't even go beyond the study guide. We have to. Would you like to ask yourself, how come a clot formed there? How did the clot form in the left side of the heart, particularly in the left ventricular chamber? In the nursing board exam, they will show this to you. And you remember the cursor when you remove the mouse? You're supposed to click, and the answer would be here. What happens if you click here? Your answer is wrong, you could fail the exam. Why is there? Okay. What will form a clot in the left ventricular chamber? Anyone? Yes, yes? Huh? AFib. AFib, very good. So it works go here, AFib, right? Okay, my dear, what is AFib? Atrial fibrillation. Okay, why, why will atrial fibrillation make you develop a blood clot? Fluttering, and therefore, it's not pumping out the blood in like a proper manner. It's like it's causing the blood, the, the blood to come from your heart. Okay. 
Okay, the answer is correct. Now remember this. When the heart is having a regular sinus rhythm, all the organs, kidney, renal artery, brain, kidney, blah, 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 all the organs, right? You can feel the pulse. Regular sinus rhythm, what happens if you have arrhythmias? I was not able to do this because I was there, here, right? When you have an irregular rhythm, as you said, it will flutter. When there is regular rhythm, RSR, regular sinus rhythm, there is continuous movement, there is never a dull moment, the blood will clot. When I was a young boy, well, we didn't really play with chickens and get the cut the neck, but uh, we had house help and we, we don't have, and those were the olden times, uh, this is 1960s, and we had house help. You know, we don't call them servants, but we, we, we would have them prepare the, the uh, what do you call that, prepare the uh, chicken. And we could see the blood, we collect the blood and put them in a container. What happens if you put the blood in a container without moving the blood? It coagulates. It coagulates, exactly. What happens if you keep on stirring that blood? Made, made liquid, right? The same thing here. It will not coagulate. But if it, remember? Skip beats. Coagulate. So but the next time it pumps, what happens? The clot will travel. That's why it's called cardioembolic strokes. So arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation. What else? Any abnormality in the what? The valves. Why? If the valves are not working properly, they have what? Mitral valve regurgitation. What's the name of the valve here? Mitral valve regurgitation means what? Back flowing. Normally, the, blood, the valve is designed to make the blood flow in one direction, and second, prevent backflow. Aside from arrhythmias like AFib, valvular dysfunctions, or even infection like endocarditis, because it's not normal. You may end up with a blood clot there. Okay? So, what's the difference? Well, here, the onset of hemiplegia is what? Gradual. Step louder. What do I mean by that? Patient, at 10 p.m. before sleeping, you know what, honey? It's a little bit heavy. Two in the morning, he wakes up, honey, it's getting heavier. At five in the morning, and then about seven, wake up, at a.m., I can't move my arms. Gradual onset of weakness, step ladder, gradual. What about in cardioembolic strokes? Sudden onset of what? Motor paralysis. So, a moment you throw a clot there, bang! Complete paralysis. And we always ask, is there any history of atrial fib in this patient? Is this patient taking any antiarrhythmic drugs? All I need to do is look at the drugs of the patient and listen, ascultate for heart sounds, I can write a wake tell. No, I, I, I've trained in a government hospital, you're one mile, one mile, I'm just of course exaggerating. One mile away, I can read what your problem is. Because we see 200 patients a day, we practice on them. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we deliver 20 babies a day in a government hospital. I don't know here, but if you have a chance to go to UCLA Harbor or Olive Hospital, go there for training. Don't go to a private hospital. Private patients don't even want to see your faces. Okay, now going back to this. Hemorrhagic, what's the difference? Hemorrhagic. Also what? Sudden onset of hemiplegia. Two things. Hypertensive bleed. If your blood pressure is 200 over 100, can it rupture? That's what happened to my father. My father was 60 years old, very young. Two months before he suffered a stroke, I told him, Dad, I don't want you to suffer a stroke, being a good son. Dear Dad, I don't want you to suffer a stroke. I love you so much, blah, blah, blah. Number one, if you're constipated, do not strain. <laughs> Called the salva manure. Second, high fiber diet, fruits and vegetables. In the event you're constipated, what do you do? Go to the nearest drugstore, over the counter, stool softeners, laxatives, even just milk of magnesia. 
But did he follow my advice? He did not. So one day, on the weekend, he he was sitting on his throne, oh. sitting on a toilet bowl. <laughs> Sudden onset of paralysis. Right side was par. Oh no, left side was paralyzed. Right side was affected. He had a hypertensive bleed. Another one is a ruptured what? Aneurysm. Or AV malformation. What is aneurysm? In the cerebral arteries here, they have a ballooning of the wall. The balloon is congenital or acquired with prolonged hypertension. You can acquire an aneurysm. As the blood pressure is not controlled, what happens to the aneurysm? The blood pressure gets bigger, higher, blood pressure made bigger, and then eventually what? Burst again. What could trigger bursting? Straining again. What about young people who suffer from a stroke like this? They're young, athletes, 16, 18 years old. They run on the basketball court or in the football field. Bam! Suffered a ruptured aneurysm. The mother of, uh, what's his famous singer, Bruno Mars? He's a Filipina based in Hawaii. She had a ruptured aneurysm. Filipino-American woman, very young. She was the same age as mine. I'm 50 plus, she was 50 plus. Do you consider 50 as young? Yes. Even though I got an AARP letter, but I... <laughs> so what the hell is this? Dad, you were old. I said, really? Okay. <laughs> young at heart. Okay. Aneurysm. What about AV malformation? Arteries are joined by capillaries and then veins. Arterial, venial. In mal means what? In Spanish means bad. Arterial venous malformation means there is no one. Capillaries, in other words, arteries are connected with the veins directly. It's an area of weakness that's the care. Can it also burst and rupture? In the brain, it could. Now, these are congenital anomalies. That's why if you happen to have a son or daughter or loved one or parent who has recurrent headaches, you have to see a, a neurologist, headache clinic, and if they do a CT scan or MRI scan, Always tell them, Dr. Gamo told me there should be a contrast material. What's a contrast material? Inject a dye. Because why? Because if you inject the dye, this white dye, white dye, can this white dye go there too? It's called angiogram. You have watch out for allergy of what? Shellfish. You know shellfish? It contains iodine. The dye also contains iodine. You develop but Wrong spasm, you could die, so that's why we always ask them. The will come out also the nursing board itself. Do you understand the difference now, okay? The treatment, can we give anticoagulants here? Yes, because clot, clot. Can we give anticoagulants here, like heparin and warfarin? No. no. You must be crazy. Can we give aspirin here? Yes. Yes, can we give aspirin here? No. No, that was happened to my dad. This was in 1985. There was no CT scan yet in the place where I grew up. Now, unfortunately, this is 60% of all strokes. This is the most common. Thrombotic. Yeah. As a six-year-old man, yes. It's the most common stroke. So the doctor relied on statistics. But if you look at the history of my father, what did he do that fateful day? He was training. A smart doctor could have just gotten the diagnosis by just reviewing what? What did the patient, what was the patient doing? Was he sleeping in bed? No, he was what? <laughs> that alone will guide you, hey, this is not a thrombotic stroke, this is what? And not only that, which do you think will suffer from more increased intracranial pressure? Erotic is bleeding inside the brain. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Which one will lead to more increased intracranial pressure? Bleeding inside the brain or brain swelling? Both will lead to brain swelling, but remember, the blood will extravasate. The brain is soft, the skull is hard. If there is bleeding inside the brain that says this, where will the blood go? Nowhere. The skull is hard, the brain is soft, there is increased what? Intracranial pressure. And what happens? If the pressure is too high, what happens to the brain? Huh? 
It goes down. What's the term there, my friend? Israel? It uh, goes to uh, squeeze down your magnum foramen. Exactly. Who told you that? You did. I did. Yes. And do you know the term used for that, Mr. Israel? Uh, hemorrhage. Herniation. Uh, herniation. There you go. It will come out in the nursing home board exam. When the brain herniates. Herniates. When the brain herniates. Because of increased brain increase in intracranial pressure, it will always go to an area of least resistance. And what is that area? The hole in the foramen magnum. So the, the, the brain will herniate like this. And what happens to the medulla oblongata here? It will be compressed by the bone called foramen magnum, the occipital bone. The moment you compress the medulla, Mr. Israel, what happens? You will stop what? Breathing. And when you stop breathing, you will? Rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, for, die for it. <laughs> 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 then you will rest in peace, then you'll be buried six feet under the ground, and then you become a permanent resident at Fort Lawn. I don't know, you have to pay a monthly fee there, like an apartment complex. I'm gonna die here, okay? <laughs> no, I say you buy before you can be burned, right? It's like uh, you buy the house, you buy the plot. Okay, anyway. There's a reason why in hemorrhagic stroke, when my father, my father suffered a stroke, I had to airlift him to a bigger hospital and did a CT scan. Lo and behold, there was too much blood. Whether to do surgery or not, craniotomy was not done because it was really too late. And um, that's that one thing you have to do, okay? I think somebody will talk about stroke, right? So that's up to them, okay? Now, what about um, Parkinson's disease? In Parkinson's patient, the problem is in the what? Subject nigra, okay, is that your topic? No. Okay, what about the subject nigra? What is the neurotransmitter that is lacking in this patient? Uh, dopamine. dopamine. Dopamine, right. And it's supposed to be an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It controls your movement. The substantia nigra together with the basal ganglia, caudate nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, they're all involved. Substantia nigra, caudate nucleus, putamen, globus pallidus, part of what we call basal ganglia. I should fall. Muhammad Ali, you remember float like a butterfly? And Michael J. Fox, they all suffered from strokes. In the case of Muhammad Ali, I think the basal ganglia and the substantia nigra was damaged with, with frequent uh, tra traumatic blow to his brain. So what are the tra manifestations? Tremor. Tremors? Because they cannot control movement because it is supposed to inhibit the dopamine, but it's lacking, you cannot inhibit the movements. And then what do you call this? Is that Tai Chi? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Miss Beverly. Beverly? I don't know. She always likes to smile to my jokes. <laughs> Relax, you might suffer from an MI. God forbid. Yes, you were there? Huh? It's good. Anyway, I have no more time. It's called Brady Kinesia. Brady means slow, like Brady cardio. B R A D Y K I N E S I A. Kinesia, the study of joint movements. So slow movement. What else? Shuffling gait, or what we call fascinating gait. F E S T I A N A. Fascinate. Thing. Fascinating gait. There is no facial expression. It's called mask. M A S K E D. Mask what? Fasces. Some books refer to this as amphibian or reptilian stare. This is wrong because amphibian refers to the frog. Have you ever seen a frog in the pond where there's a body of water? What does the frog do? <laughs> Why would the frog not blink? Why would the frog not smile? <laughs> Hi, I'm waiting for you, mosquito. Of course not. What the heck? Survival of the fittest, the elimination of the unfit, Darwinian theory of evolution. The frog has to adapt. <laughs> and then when the mosquito or fly passes by, the very long time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Now, I remember this Muhammad Ali went to the Philippines. I was a young boy, I was 13 years old. It was called Thula in Manila against the gorilla. 
Who was the gorilla? Joe Fraser. He's an old boxer. Subconsciously, he became Muhammad Ali when he converted to Islam. So I know all these details. Right? I, lo I love, I love everything. You know, I read a lot. So, from politics to war, or whatever. So we went to Thriller in Manila. I was a 13-year-old boy. My idol. So, when he would speak on television, I am the greatest. I am the most handsome boxer in the world. With all the facial expressions, I love women. I have ten wives. Because in Islam you can marry, I think, right? I, I don't know if I'm planning to convert to <laughs> my wife, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my one and only my wife. <laughs> I'm a devout Catholic Christian, so I'll be in trouble. Joke only joke. My wife will delete that. So Muhammad Ali had many kids, right, with different women. So but his facial expression was dramatic, but when he suffered from Parkinson's, guess what? Muhammad. The sad thing. Same thing with Michael J. Fox. Okay. That's one thing we can read. There's no cure, right? Okay. Okay, what about MS? What happens in MS? MS patients involves the myelin sheet, which is what? The, the sign to what? Speed up the nerve conduction, the nerve impulse, because the nerve impulse will jump from one node of Ranvay to the next node of Ranvay. In other words, the nerve impulse, if this were the accent, without the myelin, it will walk like this. With the accent, with the myelin, and the accent will jump what? With myelinated accent. Faster conduction of nerve impulses. It affects the brain and spinal cord. It's called white matter. It's affected because white matter is, the reason why it's white is because of the myelination of the accents, right? And what is the problem? It's autoimmune. You have a, these women are very commonly affecting women of middle age, 20 to 40. Women, it's an autoimmune disorder whereby your own self attacks your own what? Myelin. And you call it what? Plaque. P L A Q E. Just like the plaque. P L A Q E, plaque, fat deposit in lesions in the brain. When we do a scan, an MRI scan, you can see the plaque lesions consistent with MS. So, depending on what part of the brain is affected, you can become hemiplegic. Or if it's spinal cord MS, what is paralysis from the neck down? Quad. One, two, three, four, quadriplegic or hemiplegic half. And what is half of the body? Paraplegic, spinal cord MS. Now, because of my training, I have seen all kinds of patients from MS. Now, what is Guillain Barre syndrome? It's in your study guide. Paralyzed. Yes? Huh? Okay, so the peripheral nerves rather than the brain and spinal cord. MS affects the brain and spinal cord central nervous system. GBS or Guillain Barre syndrome affects the peripheral nerves or peripheral nervous system, which affects what? It's called ascending paralysis. What do I mean by that? Complain of numbness and weakness of the feet, then it will ascend to the leg, the thigh, then pelvic, and then abdominal muscles. Which muscle is the most important muscle in your body? Why? Because that is a muscle for breathing. If the diaphragm, what is the nerve supply to the diaphragm? Silence means you're thinking. Very good. Huh? What is the nerve supply to the diaphragm? Huh? Huh? Of course. Sprinic. Sprinic, just like the frog. Sprinic. Sprinic. Nerve to the diaphragm. Sprinic, P H R E N I C. So it becomes a problem. I lost a patient because the nurse failed to recognize. One time I was making rounds in the intensive care unit. A patient was diagnosed with GBS by the neurologist. When I saw the patient, the patient was breathing through the abdominal wall. That's not normal, right? And I told the nurse, what, when did this happen? Yes. Six hours ago, my goodness, called the resident, we have to intubate the patient. The following day, I made rounds. The bed was, there was no patient on top of the bed. What's it, what does it mean? Yeah. I felt bad. That is how you could lose a patient because the nurse could not recognize when it is difficulty of breathing or what we call dyspnea. Please don't ever let the patient die because of incompetence. Can doctors make the same thing? There are a lot of incompetent doctors in the world too. It's mm -hmm. like my father. The doctor thought that there was a thrombotic stroke. What did the doctor give my dad? Aspirin. Yeah. Shit. Oh. Nah. Apologize. <laughs> my dad didn't get better, you get even worse. That's the crazy thing about these things. Now, okay, so GBS, multiple sclerosis. Now, what about, I forgot to mention, which is more dangerous? I think it came out in your study discussion board. Epidural or subdural hematoma and why? Epidural. Why epidural? Because the arteries 
Which are, what are the name of these arteries? Okay, relax, chill, chill. <laughs> what if the dura arachnoid pia is part of what we call what? So what do you think is the name of the artery? Oh my God, don't you love anatomy? <laughs> right, what's the name of the artery? Meningeal artery. What's the name of the veins? Meningeal bridging veins. Now which will kill you? Arteries or venous bleeding? Why? The blood pressure is higher. And the amount of bleeding will be what? Oh, Jesus, my God. It's like a fountain of blood. Now, if you don't believe me, go ahead tonight, go home, get a blade, a sharp blade, cut your artery and cut your vein. I'm just joking. Which will have higher pressure? The arteries. The veins? It's because of this, right? So, people think that epidural is more dangerous, or, or subdural is, is below? No. It's actually epidural. I have a 19-year-old cousin, motorcycle, no helmet, beer, drunk, fat, walked towards the, the uh, hospital. Now he was the son of the governor, my, my uncle was the governor of the place where I grew up. He went there, he said, oh, I have a headache, I fell, projectiles, I'm <laughs> After 10, 15 minutes, he became comatose. So he had, uh, he had, what kind of problem did he have? Epidural or subdural? Epidural. Epidural. Right? Now the problem was because this is in the 80s, again there was no CT scan. We did not want to touch him because he was the son of the governor and there was, if they have, they called me two days later, it was too late. I brought a neurosurgeon there because there was no CT scan. What you can do is take an x-ray by injecting what? A white dye here. And you'll be able to know what the problem is because the dye will travel here to the, like a tree, arterial tree branches, and you can take an x-ray. You can see it's called cerebral angiogram. But because the pressure inside was too high, the blood did not even go to the brain anymore. And I cannot forget the expression of my aunt when, they, when the neurosurgeon said, it was a female neurosurgeon, oh, there's nothing we can do. Why don't we just donate his body for organ donation? Oh my God, my, my aunt was crying. Ooh. It's a 19 year old voice, so very young. That's why I always bring with me an electrical drill. I'm just joking. You can drill a hole to get rid of the, the blood. The, the, they, they could have done that to my cousin, but they did not. They, they were just scared because they were not neurosurgeon trained. Okay? Now, so epidural is more dangerous than subdural. Now, arthritis patients. Again, another thing to study instead of doing a concept map is doing what we call a table. So the idea here is that one of the things, learning tool that I would strongly recommend is getting a white, how many of you have a whiteboard at home? And a, like this. So pretend that you are me, the teacher, to a class of zero students. So you, you talk to yourself as if you're crazy, but you're not because you're actually learning. So I say arthritis. Arthro means joint, itis means inflamed joint. So you can have what? Osteo. RA, cut, arthritis, right? The three common ones that you could probably include lupus arthritis, other arthritis, right? Here the problem is the articular what? Cartilage, wear and tear, weight bearing. Here the problem is what? The synovial what? Membrane. There is what? Autoimmune disorder, which affects what? The synovial membrane. You have synovitis, synovial membrane, and you have what? Synovial fluid effusion. What is effusion? Like pericardial effusion. Or let's say pleural effusion, excessive fluid within the joint. Okay? And then when you have increase in the thickness of the wall, we call that Panus formation. Have you heard about this in your readings? P A N N U S in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, why is it symmetrical involvement of the joints? Because the antibodies are in the blood. If it affects the left hand, can it affect the right hand? Yes, because the antibodies, autoimmune, is in the blood. What about does it affect left knee and right knee? Yes, symmetrical. What about here? It may affect the right knee first, after one year it may affect the left knee. In other words, not at the same time. 
So it is not symmetrically involved. Okay? So usually what? Weight-bearing joints such as knee, hips, feet, ankle, even the vertebral spine. What about gout? Uric what? Crystals deposit where? In the joint. Now what happens if the uric acid crystals deposit in the soft tissues of the bones and the soft tissues? What do you call that? What do you call the deposition of uric acid crystals, let's say, in the big toe or, you know, in the joint? Yes? It begins with letter T. Letter T is in palm. Tophus, very good. Tophus, if it's singular, and tophi, if it's more than one. Now, if you see a patient diagnosed with gouty arthritis, there is what? High levels of uric acid in the blood, and excessive amount of uric acid will deposit in the joint, causing this to develop into what? Gouty arthritis. And in one of the discussion board, I think the recent <coughs> time, that 57-year-old uh, professor, that was me, okay, but I modified it that I had what? Gout, right? So what kind of stone would I experience? That mine was not uric acid, but most common is what? Calcium oxalate. I told you that I had gout. I had the uh, kidney stone, right? Not gout. <laughs> Can gout affect your kidney? Yes. Because the crystals will deposit in the kidney, you develop what we call gouty nephropathy. Do you understand? And can that lead to chronic kidney disease? <coughs> Definitely. Okay? So, the, the bottom line, if it's septic arthritis, of course, septic means what? Bacteria. Bacteria is causing what? Infection. Sometimes called septic arthritis or pyogenic arthritis. How do we know? We do arthrosynthesis. What is arthrosynthesis? You get a needle, you get a syringe, gloves, sterile technique. You're going to specify, put that in a sterile container and do a culture and sensitivity testing. And you can see the bacteria causing what? Infection in septic or what we call pyogenic arthritis. Okay. Lupus arthritis, of course, when you have systemic lupus erythematosus. Okay? Do you understand? So apparently in dealing with neurologic disorders like strokes, traumatic brain injury, subdural, epidural, you have to know where the problem is, why is there a problem, how can we solve the problem. Autoimmune diseases such as RA, right? You have to give drugs that will control the severe immune response. And I think, was there somebody assigned to do the RA or not? I think maybe not, right? The bottom line, therefore, is that you have to know, okay? As I said, make sure you know everything about topics we have discussed. Okay, I'll give you five minutes after a break. They come back, I'll give the quiz.